happens. Okay, I think we're recording. So uh, this is summertime. I'll play it in both octaves and I'll also post a demo video of this as well so you can have just the two. So if I can get all of my students to mute their mics please. So we're in the key of E minor here. One, two, three. So that's it down the octave, and then once we've tackled that, we'll look at the upper octave, which is exactly the same thing, but way up on the E string. Okay, so... Um, okay, everybody ready? So, this is not a typical folk tune. It just has one melody. It's a song, one melody. It doesn't have an A part and a B part. It's just one part. It repeats over and over and over. It's over and over and over again. So, starting with our first finger on A, we're going to go. So, one thing you should know about this tune is it's super swung. So, there's a lot of notes. It's really syncopated. There's notes that don't land right on the beat. So just, um, just try and get a feel for that. Um, maybe actually when I'm done, I might go grab my metronome so you can hear how it lines up. Um, so here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That second B is two, three, four, one. It's a long bow, so make sure you save your bow, distribute it, and don't use it all up on the first couple beats because then you're going to be sort of, um, yeah, going, you're going to have to all of a sudden go really, really slow to, to let make that note last for the last couple beats, so take your time there. Um, after we're finished that, we're going to do a lift. So we're going to go... of the last two notes. So it's 
a low E and a low B. Okay, so that together is going to go. got so far. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Two, three, four. One, the same.
it's a big fat long bow up there so you have to make sure you're kind of rationing your bow for that up bow as well okay I'm gonna count you in this time from the top one two three four and one and two and three If you can make that bow last for that whole seven counts. One, three, and four, and one, and two, three. Yeah, seven counts. In real time, it'll be faster than this, but you'll still have to save your bow. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Okay, I like to do a crescendo on that elbow, which means to do a crescendo, you have to do two things. One, you have to increase the weight of your bow, but if you only increase the weight of your bow, it will crunch. So the other thing you have to do is you have to increase the speed of your bow. If you're going to increase the speed of the bow, that means you're going to run out of bow faster. So you really, really have to start with the slowest bow you possibly can so that you can get a crescendo in that bow. Because if you start going too fast, you're going to run out of bow real fast. So let's try it one more time and keep that in mind. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Two, and three. One more time, two more times, no more times, no more times, one more time, two more times, two more times, okay. One and two and four and one and two and three. <laughs> second phrase and first phrase. At the end of the second first phrase, we are going to lift, but it's kind of a funny lift. We're not going to lift all the way back to the frog because the last phrase starts on an up bow. So we are going to lift, 
because we are down here, but we're only going to lift the middle of the bow. Okay, so let's try that. First raise, second raise, first raise again, and then lift and land on the middle of the bow. One, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three. version but is in the jazz standard version. because you just played a low one. So you're kind of going to make sure it bounces back up to its normal spot for the E at the end. Started with the up bow on the B, on the G string, second finger is. <laughs> Big fat long bow at the end there. Let's try that together. Get ready for that up bow with the second finger on the G. One, two, three. Great, let's try that again. So, middle of the bow. One, two, three. Cool. Let's practice. 
practice singing that bow on that last note. One more time. One, two, and three. <laughs> guys so you got the melody down the octave now we'll assemble it get really comfortable with it and then if that has maxed anybody out you can stay on the lower octave and continue to play it and practice while we learn the upper octave but if your brain hasn't completely maxed out, maxed out I would suggest learning it up the octave as well because that's it for the tune there's no B part so even if you feel like your know, brain might be going a little bit much, you can always come back and rewatch it again. It's good, good for your brain to learn things in different octaves. Okay, so here's a little reminder of the whole thing. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
去，嗯，对。This is a really good exercise to strengthen your fourth finger. You have lots of fours when you go up the octave. And if this is overload for some of you, you're just welcome to play along down the octave. That's also really good practice. Hearing something off the up the octave and having to play along down the octave is good practice too. So, what note did we start on when we played down the octave? A B, right? So we're gonna start on a B up the octave, which is up here. Fourth finger. So, trick to having a fourth finger, strong fourth finger, is make sure your elbow can get right underneath your fiddle. And in order to do that, your fiddle has to not be in front of you because you're not going to be able to get your elbow underneath far enough. So, really make sure that fiddle's up nice and high and that you can get your elbow as far under there as possible because you want to be able to have the best reach as possible so that you have an arch in your fourth finger. You don't want a flat four because you won't have any power in it. It's like a bridge. Flat bridge is not as strong as an arched bridge, right? So you wanna make sure you can get that fourth finger bent. So first couple notes. This should be easier because you now know what set it needs to sound like, but I'll still break it down. So we're going from a B to a G, which is a big stretch because it's a G is a low second finger. So we have to have our fourth finger on and our low second finger on. And for those long fourth finger notes, those of you who are starting to do vibrato can add some vibrato to that fourth finger. Okay, so let's try that together. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Again. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three. Okay, next part. Third finger. Okay, and then we're going to go back up to that four. Top, fourth finger, two, three, and four, and one. Nice, I see lots of really strong looking fourth fingers. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three. Two, three, four, and lift. Two, and three. Cool. One more time. One, and two, and three. Two, and three, and four, and one. Great. 
just like when we're down the octave, same first couple notes. Big stretch, four, two, and then three. So that second section. Okay, four, four, two, three. Ready, go. Two. Big long bow here. One and two. And three. Whew, okay, let's go from the top. Fourth finger. Top, top of the up the octave part. One and two and three. Two, three, four, and lift. spot where you do the kind of like half ass lift <laughs> half ass left and then an up bow okay so let's go up to there one more time one two three four one and two and three get those elbows underneath there guys one and two and three on the same note that we just played. Up bow on the B. up to a to a low two on the E. This is where the B flat happens. When we played it down the octave, it was a low one. Now it's a low four. Okay. So finally, you don't actually have to stretch that fourth finger for one note. And if you really want to get fancy, you can even slide it up there. 
So instead of putting your fourth finger on a low four, you could put it on a three and just give it a little nudge up there. A little bit of attitude. Okay, so let's see if we can piece together just that last little chunk. Starting with the up bow on the A1, E. B flat. Okay, nice and slow again. Starting on an up bow on the B. Okay, again, up, bow, and go. Okay, one more time. One, two, and three. Let's put together the whole upper octave. And if it didn't happen, that's okay because we're going to save this video and it's going to go online and you can do this class as many times as you want. Or you can just play down the octave and then we have two octaves happening at the same time. It's great. That sounds awesome. Here we go. Whole upper octave. Fourth finger. Nice and strong. Elbows underneath. Arched. Fourth fingers. One, two, three, four, and one. Same note. You guys stay up there. I'm gonna go down the octave. And let's see if you can hold your own on the upper octave while I play the lower octave. And if you feel like the upper octave killed you, you can play down the octave with me. I'm not gonna know the difference. Okay. Oh, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three.
little bit faster now. Shake, shake, shake. Because I know they're sore. Couldn't be too sore. Um, I'm going to put the backing track on. I'll play down the octave twice. And then I'll play up the octave twice. You can do whatever you want. So if you want to play with me, you can play with me. If you want to challenge yourself to play the opposite of what I'm playing, you can. You could play down the octave with me once and then jump up the octave while I'm playing down the octave. And then do the same thing when I'm up the octave. Whatever gives you the best challenge and yeah, and helps you the best. So I'll put this on and I'll get on pitched. So maybe that. Okay. So we're gonna give it a full round as an intro.
you, person who recorded that backing track for us. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now. So goodbye to anyone in virtual land. Thanks for joining us. And I will record, um, or I will post that video tonight when we're done here.